Hey, welcome to the book of Exodus. We're in chapter 31. Now let's look at those first six verses. Now the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, See, I have called by name Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur of the tribe of Judah. I have filled him with the Spirit of God in wisdom and understanding and knowledge and in all kinds of craftsmanship, to make artistic designs for work in gold and silver and in bronze, and in the cutting of stones for settings and in the carving of wood, that he may work in all kinds of craftsmanship. And behold, I myself have appointed with him Oholiab, the son of Ahizamach, of the tribe of Dan, and in the hearts of all who are skillful, I have put skill that they may make all that I have commanded you. So we're shifting now. Uh, we've gone through all this on the sanctuary, and now he is talking about the people I've called. And who did he call? You'd think maybe he'd call Levites. Only the Levites can touch anything, right? Once the priesthood begins, only they can be priests. But no, we see that there's craftsmen from the tribe of Judah, craftsmen from the tribe of Dan. And before this stuff's all consecrated to God's use, after that, yes, these guys won't even be able to touch it. But right now, God has called these people specifically to be his workmen, called them by name. They are called, and they're going to serve in the creation of all this that we've been talking about for four or five chapters here. Okay, so it's interesting. God is calling people, whoever they are, these are the ones he's called, and he's given them the skill and the equipment that they need for this. So interesting that that uh, the top guy here, Bezalel, he is from the tribe of Judah, not a Levite. Verse 3 is interesting because I have filled him with the Spirit of God. Here's kind of the quote-unquote first Spirit-filled uh, layperson. And it's not a priest, it's not a clergy, it's not a prophet. It's nothing like that. The person who is the person who's filled with the Spirit is, is a layman, a guy in, you know, overalls, a guy that's, uh, he's a worker. He's like, he's working in his shop. That's that guy. God has called that guy and filled him with his Spirit. Sometimes, you know, we think that, oh, surely the first person to be filled with the Spirit would be uh, a prophet or something like that. But no, it's a workman. God calls everybody and he fills people with his Spirit as he decides to do. These are people who have special skill, but God is enhancing their skill. God is the original giver, certainly, of any skill that they have, but he now seems to be giving a special enhancement of that skill, and they're going to build all the different pieces of the sanctuary. I have a little note here from Stewart's Bible Commentary on page 651. I just thought I would read that to you or sort of loosely read it. Being filled with the Spirit is a biblical idiom for having from God the ability to do or to say exactly what God wants done or said. Bezalel as being filled with the Spirit meant that he could correctly construct the tabernacle and its furnishings exactly as God wanted them made. Paul's teaching could not be clearer as to the fact that losing self-control could never be spiritual and in light of this emphasis on self-control is a basic part of spirituality. Some people have this idea that, you know, that being filled with the Spirit means you go around and do crazy stuff and it, it's unreasonable and it's weird. And, and But that's okay. That's being filled with the Spirit. But in the Bible, we don't have that. In the Bible, we have evidence that being filled with the Spirit means you're able to do what God asks you to do. That's what it is. So it's very rational. Being filled with the Spirit is a very rational thing, not an irrational thing. It causes us to be rational. It enhances us in the sense of using self-control. It does not take away our self-control. So anyway, I don't want to push on that too much, but just an interesting piece here because we're talking about being spirit-filled. Uh, this is uh, this is not the way it is in some of these big mega churches with people rolling on the floor and different things like that. Um, nobody's rolling on the floor here. Instead, these guys are working hard to create. They're going to work hard to create this sanctuary just exactly as God wants it created. And they're going to be successful because they have self-control and skill that has been given them by God. All right. See you tomorrow morning as we carry on. Thank you.